So we actually have money in the bank. Welcome to this episode of Builder Nation, the end of season six. But don't worry if you are new here, you can catch up. Watching this video will probably help you get a gist of where we are and you can follow along. So make sure you do subscribe if you are new to this video. But the return of viewers, welcome back. Make sure you comment below and let me know on my signings. Let me know what tactic you would play going into next season. Let me know how you think it's going in general. Let me know what you agree with how I play the game and let me know what you disagree with. Doesn't mean I'm going to change it, but it's nice to hear. So we're going to start by looking at the outs. So Gerson left to Jor Gordons for 450k, rising as 575. That did upset a lot of people, but he got one goal in 16. We paid nothing for him and got over half a million in return. I just decided it was worth letting him go. He wasn't a prolific goal scorer, to be honest with you. And I do realise I did just show you him and you can't actually see any of his attributes. If you are new, that's what he looks like. He, he was all right, but like I say, he just never... He, he just never did it. I will point out mid Scoogan as well before him has gone out on loan to Shannon in um, Iceland. A bit sad that someone who's been with us throughout the journey has gone out on loan, but he was just performances were just not there and he just got to the point where maybe this step was just a bit too much for him uh giovanelli we finally sold so giovanelli has gone for 200k we obviously ran for a couple of years we'd hoped he potentially could develop into something but he just never did uh only featured seven times for the first team went on loan to the third tier and couldn't really do it so that showed me he was never going to turn in someone who we wanted we got 200k for him i think it's money well done uh krog has gone on loan to hood obviously this season was the season i hoped he pushed in and became a proper first team player last year getting young player of the year but this season, he has been shocking. And I mean absolutely shocking. I hope going out and getting some first-team football can see regain, regain his form. But he's been really, really bad. Uh, Jonas Orner has left us. And he is now playing over in the second tier of Spanish football. Attribute-wise, was always good. But his personality is now balanced and not perfectionist. But attribute-wise, he was always good, but he just never did it for us. 14 and 61 league games is just not sufficient enough. So he's ended up leaving us for 85k. And then Nazir has gone alone to Brescia in Italy, which did shock me, to be honest with you. I was a bit a bit shocked when he's played two sub appearances in Serie A. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing something in him, but because he's not really featured this season. But... And you can see in terms of squad comparison, he's way off compared to everyone else. Did it again where I left the cover on. But maybe I'm not seeing something. I don't know. But he doesn't look that good. But he's, well, not featuring, but kind of featuring for a club in the top line of Italian football. But was playing for our B team this season. So in terms of the ins, the first in is a free transfer from Norseland is Benjamin Apaya. Now he came in to feature for our youth team, but to be honest with you, he's kind of stepped up massively and looked quite good for our first team. Really good physicals, good technicals and mentals for that position and not bad. He's been a very, very solid player. So Benjamin Apaya came in on a free. He's now valued up to 3 million, 18 years old. And I like what I see. Now, I did hint at last episode that I had brought someone in to push Chris Liveland. And Andre Pereira is that man. Defensive midfielder. Very solid mentally and physically. Jump and reach is a bit low, but we can live with that. And um, technically good for that position. I think he's a very, very solid defensive midfielder. Again, a high value. Again, came in on a free. Now, after Gerson leaving us, we were very, very short in the striker position. And the players knew it. They actually came to me and said, we, we need more depth in, in the striker position. And I, I agree with them. But um, I really did struggle to bring someone in. I've ended up spending a lot more money than I would like to on um, Chupa Akpom, former Middlesbrough player, who's where I know him mainly from. He did come, but I mean, I know him from most of them clubs, but recently Middlesbrough before he moved on to Ajax. But he's coming to us as a poacher. He looks very talented. Is he going to score the goals? That's another question. 
Now, the final signing, I took a punt with, and I took a screenshot, so you can see on the screen what I could see when I wanted to sign him. And he's not as good as I hoped, but we paid 5k for him. He's valued up to 1.1 million now. He's playing in our B team, but set to be available for our under-19s. Um, mainly so he could learn the language a bit before he came into us. Can be a backup as a striker and a central mid. I like that because only having 25 positions available, we really are struggling to... We really are struggling to register all the players we've got and want. So players who can be a cover for striker and attacking mid, I'm a big fan of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through how the Europa League has been going. We're going to play, we've got one more game, which is a live come we're going to do next. Then we'll recap how the season as a whole has gone, the league, etc. So we came against Bromby in the Europa League playoff. Now the good thing is the league must have dropped two places two places after last season because the team who came third and got Europa League only got the third qualifying round, but I came in in the playoff round. So, and I noticed the um, coefficients but two places above would have got that. So the league must have dropped down, which is a bit unfortunate. We are going to start monitoring them kind of things a lot more now, the coefficients, etc. So, we came against Bromby and Akpom scored. In a 1 1 away from home before we beat them 2 1 at home with Volas and Bergersen on the score sheet. Going in two, our first ever European group stage. So we came up against Rapid Wien first and lost 4 2. Larsen with a shocking red card, by the way. Two footed someone when the game was over. There's just no point of it. Uh, we then played Vittoria from Portugal and got a 2 1 defeat. Got, got it. We got it. We got it. <sighs> I'm a bit worried at this point. We actually changed formation here and went to a flat midfield instead of the attacking wingers and got a 3-2 victory. Akpom with two and a pie on the score sheet, beating Besiktas and securing us half a million prize money. We then travel to Wolfsburg. Now, this this was the shock of the, of the whole tournament. A 2-0 victory. They smashed us. It was highlight after highlight for them. But they only managed four shots on tag. They managed shots over the bar and stuff. But a 2-0 victory and goals from Urshal and Larsen meant that we picked up back-to-back -back wins in the Europa League. We've then just played Malmo at home and this sums up our season, to be honest. A 3-1 defeat. And today we're playing Astana at home. Astana from Kazakhstan? Yeah, from Kazakhstan. Playing them at home. And a victory today could pull us into qualification positions. And then next season, before the start of next season, we are coming up against Rens and AZ Alkmaar, which we'll obviously recap in the next episode. So... Let's um, look at our squad, make sure everything's set up. Tactics. So, Horgan in goal. Horgan has pretty much secured himself as our first choice keeper now. Being six foot six and being just an absolute powerhouse has pretty much done that. He's, he's just better. And the amount of aerial crosses London was costing us, he's stepped up now and he really, really is um, securing himself. Penalties faced, by the way, eight, saved four. That, that, that's mad. So, Horgan in goal. Fanny right back, I think. Maybe Helland, actually, now. I have been retraining Helland, one of the players we picked up, if you remember, for 80k. I've been retraining him as a right back because as a very solid right back, he's got it. And he's 6 foot 4 as well, which gives us that extra bit defensively as well. I think... Uh, yeah, I think Helland right back. Jurgensen, Mohn, and then Hilm. Or do we go... See, this is where I'm struggling at the minute. No, we have to go Hilm because Scallon's still out injured. Uh, Pereira in defensive midfield with Zitman as a central mid, but he does have ind individual instructions to pass it shorter, take more risks and dribble less. Because, well, he can't really dribble. Dribbling of eight. But he has got really good pass. 11 of passing, but vision of 16. So, but I do potentially could be one to leave. Uh, Larson. We're going to go sort of, no, I would like, I'm not sure, Volas is out injured. I think we're going to go sort of, this is one of the issues I've struggled with this season. A pie on the left and Urshal up front. 
over Akpom. Yeah, I think so. Urshel's been playing really well. Now, he is wanted, and he has been complaining that he's not been getting enough football. He has 10 goals in 52 league games. He looks insane. And he's only 20. I feel like I should give him another season to show me he can start scoring goals. But at the same time, he's been shocking. So it's a bit of a tough call. Like... One goal every five games in the league, and bear in mind he's had a couple of hat tricks. It is um, it's not really acceptable when you're going like maybe seven or eight games without him actually scoring a goal. I need a striker who's going to score every every other game basically at the minute. So when I scroll down, currently we're in twenty second, so we are in qualification spot. A win here will give us two more points than we currently have. So, I think it's a huge game, and Astana has struggled. They've lost five games so far in a row. Uh, Helland puts a cross across. It comes to Pereira. Go back to Helland, he does. Helland goes back to Pereira. We pass near around. We're trying to find that gap. We go back to Moan, forward to, Z to Zitman, to Pereira. Over the top, a pie is in. A pie. Oh, he's put it I don't like the orange ball, by the way. It's so hard to see it. Like, I'm struggling to see the orange ball, so I assume on camera it might be tough for you guys. I'm not sure. A sort of just completely gives it away. Counter-attack possibility for a stand. Now, ball over the top, in behind. Oh, my God, is that known goal? It is known goal for Moan. Oh, please, step it up, man. Come on. We've been poor, poor second half of this season. 1-0. I'm just going to give a shout. We've picked up a couple of victories in the Europa League, yes. But all in all, this season we've been very, very hit and miss. Very hit and miss. We've kind of been how I would think we would have been a couple of years ago. But after a couple of successful seasons in the top flight, it's like we've just kind of got complacent in a few of the players. So I am a bit concerned, but I'm also expecting a few changes over the winter to try to fix this. Just going to kick off. What was that? Going to give um, Urshal till 55 minutes. If we haven't had another highlight or a chance for him, he's coming off. And there we go. Nothing at all. So Urshal's going to come off for Akpom. Uh, Sorte, I'm going to take off for... I think, I think I'm going to go Bergeson. He can play on the right wing. And I think Helen I'm going to take off for Fanny because I think we need slightly more offensive fullback when we are losing the game. It would be nice if um, we can at least get some sort of a highlight. I'm going to go all out attack because I just want to get us forward. We need to get back into this game at some point. We have a highlight. Apaya puts it across. I mean, that's a quick highlight. Hey, if you want to show me highlights that quickly, do it. Do it. Highlight pops up with a pie down the left-hand wing. Hits that byline, crosses it. Goal from Bergeson, and we are 1-1. Okay, so it was a throw-in from Hilm. A pie hits the byline, puts it across. Bergeson coming in from the right-hand side, tucks it away with his left foot and makes it 1-1. Now, this game is played in Viking Stavanger Stadium, the SR Bank Arena. So, it is a bit annoying that we're travelling an hour for our home games. But... I think we're a few years away from being able to expand our stadium unless the, the board takes a massive law now, which I'd rather they didn't do. So we were not good enough. It ended with a one-all draw. We did get 180k for that, which is nice. Puts us up to 4 million in the bank, um, which that's very much welcome considering we get all of our sponsorship money coming in as well. Considering we expanded the training facilities at the start of this season, we are at 2.2 million profit i am considering requesting to the board another facility upgrade because we do have the money available for it and these are the young the early phases where that's important i think i'm going to ask if we can do our training and our youth facilities and while we are on can we please improve youth recruitment so they're the three I'm going to be requesting. But you can see, by the way, the board are happy, A+. Plus, and also supporters are now happy. Not that we're not making the most of set pieces, but if it helps, if it helps, I'm not overly pleased with that myself. 
Um, but our season as a whole, and let's recap everything, shall we? Let's show you the league, the league campaign. So elite season is there. We are going to flip it upside down so you can see it. Clear. I know Colin isn't the biggest fan when I flip it. So Bird of Glimp was the last game you were with us for. As you can see, so back-to-back -back wins before back-to-back -back defeats away to Valerenga and at home to Viken. 3-0 at home to Viken. Two were red cards. We then had a solid month of August. Victories against Hamcam, Arndal, Bran and then again Stromsgod set. Before, again, like we did against um, Viking, we travelled away, we went up to Mulder, and we got beat 4-0, and again, by the way, another very silly red card near the end of the episode, near the end of the game. We then played Salzburg at home and got 1-0 victory. We then went away to Rosenborn and got 0-0. This was roughly around the time we dropped back to that 4-1, 4-1, very more defensive tactic. We then played Odds at home, got 2-1 victory. Before Sogendal at home, Starbeck away with back-to-back -back defeats. And we did end the season, by the way, against Berda Glimt. Now, they were two points clear at this point. They needed a win to secure the title. We needed a win to secure European qualification. I was not expecting a 4-1 victory. Now, that victory saw us sneak in ahead of Rosenborg to the Europa Conference League qualifying. Now, Berda Glimp won the Cup, which means we are in Europe again. For the third season in a row, we're going to be in Europe. And if we had lost that game to Berda Glimp, Rosenborg, due to goal difference, would have pipped us. Now, we had a zero goal difference as well with that 4-1 victory, but that is very, very disappointing, I'm telling you. But all in all... I'm I'm happy that again a team who's expected to get relegated we finished in European qualification. But I'm also very annoyed at the fact that we were only five points off top and we played so so badly. We could technically we could have won the league title. We could have won the league title this season. We need to sort that kind of stuff out. Um, if we look at how we are compared to other teams then, in terms of sponsorship, we're now 11th. So our sponsorship is improving. Mulder have £16.5 million a year in um, sponsorship income, by the way. I mean, that that's just absolutely mad. <laughs> that's absolutely mad. Um, in terms of stadiums, we have by far the smallest. Um, well, not by far, 138 seats. But then it goes up by a good few thousand to Starbeck, Sogndal, Tromsø, etc. We we do need to um, get that improved as quickly as we can. In terms of season ticket, people, we have 731. The next lowest is 1,100. Again, we really do need to improve that. In terms of managers-wise, we're doing well here. You can see duration at the team. Bird of Glimt are topping it, then odds, then us. So we are doing well, 2,000 days now. Job security is untouchable. We have a win percentage of 54% as manager, which I'll take that. I'll take that, 100%. The model manager is doing well, 70%. He's only been in 184 days, but that's an impressive amount. So in terms of how we've done compared to other teams, we have tried to dominate the ball at 58%. I would like to try to get that up. I think next season, one of the key things I want to do is get players who can dominate the ball in the attacking third better. Defensively, I think we're doing all right. Offensively, I think we're really, really poor at the minute. Um, so in terms of attacking, goals-wise, we were 12th. 34 goals in 30 games. That sums up pretty much everything I would say. Um, in terms of... Let's have a look at things, shall we? Crosses completed percentage, 14%. It's around average what people seem to get. Goals from corners, we only got three. Something I'm going to work on over the, over the, over the winter. Goals from direct free kicks, not a single one. So maybe a free kick taker. Maybe a wide man who can take free kicks might be needed. Goals from indirect free kicks, we got three. So we do work well in them. Pass completion rate at 89% means we are holding on to that ball quite well. So defensively, we only conceded 34 in 30 games. We did have, um, where is it, our clean sheets. Clean sheets isn't on, the, on this. You kind of think it would be. But you can see corners conceded eight. 
direct free kicks, none. Indirect free kicks, three. Not many direct free kicks have been scored, so maybe that is something wrong with the game. I'm not sure, but it, it does seem very, very low. So in terms of fouls, fouls made, we are top of that, 484. You can see here red cards. We picked up four red cards. It's, it's quite bad. Just looking at the yellow cards, we picked up 45 yellow cards in 30 games. We were top of that. And red cards as well, we were top of that. So, that, slightly embarrassing, isn't it? Um, in terms of how we've done then compared to the other teams with this kind of stuff, we had a 2,500 attendance. We were 82% full for most of the games, which is nice. We had one sellout. So, it does show we, we don't need a new stadium yet. But at the same time, we need a new stadium for European games. But I think we can travel for now. And we need to improve our facilities. If we can get our facilities up to four stars, four and a half stars, and have the best facilities in the country, that's where we'll see big gains and we'll start pushing for that title. Um, as you can see here, sixth highest, 82%. Starbeck at 97% is well done to them, 100%. Sellout wise, um, a few teams didn't sell out once. Trump, Savalarenga, Arndal, a few only sold out once. Starbeck eight times. Um, lost attendances. I do wish it would show why that was the lowest attendance. In terms of transfer spend, we we made 923k. Uh, odds spent 8 million. Like, what? They spent 10.75 million. Who the hell did they sign? 2.4 million total on this guy. Okay, Polish striker. They spent 3 million on a 19-year-old from Valerenga, who does look good. But that's big money. That's big money. I, w I wouldn't be spending that. Um, salary per annum, we are by far the lowest. We are spending 1.9. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit shaky spending so much. But when you look compared to everybody else, maybe we need to put our hands in our pockets. I think we're spending 42. We have 61 available, but it, we, not, we don't make enough money a month to cover that. We don't. We are making profit every single season now. But that doesn't mean you just spew it all away. I would I would like to improve our facilities. And if we were spending 20k a week more on our wages, then facilities wouldn't be able to be improved. And at the minute, we have the three stars on both. Um, our youth recruitment junior culture needs improving massively. So they're the type of things I want to focus on over the next year or two. Um, for stadium, yes, I would love to improve. We are going to look to add a couple of players over the winter. I do already have two agreed, a striker and another attacking mid-stroke striker. I did tell you we were weak up front. Because when you look, not a single player got over double figures. And our top goal scorer was our central midfielder, Larson, with eight. Urshaw with seven, you have Bergeson with six, you have Akpom with six, Volas with five, and then we drop down to two straight away. In terms of assists, Volas picked up nine assists for us this season. His contract is running out, and if he agrees to come as a one-year contract as a backup, we will hold on him for one more year. I do need depth out wide, and he offers that, and he does guarantee goals and assists as you can see, compared to other people. But at the minute, he wants to be a first-team player. And he's not going to get that, I'm afraid. I like this option, the minutes, because I can say, OK, well, who are we wasting a slot on? So you can see here, Seb Olsen only played 198 minutes for us this season. Soto only played 390, sorry, 59. But he is a young talent who I think I would like to retrain as a central midfielder on attack. I think he could play that position. I think, again, it would offer us a lot when we have a player who can cover multiple positions. So I think them two are going to stick around. He can cover central mid, winger, and striker. Like, potentially, do we need Volas to stick around when this kid's coming through as well? I don't think so. But when you go through, Fiskerstrand, 380, again, can cover multiple positions. Uh, Bastions. This is a tough one. Because, let, let me tell you a mistake I made. I started training him as a right-back. As you can see, being trained as a right-back. Then I realised he actually hasn't got a right foot. So, so I've been telling him to start training his weaker foot. Because he can play multiple positions. He can play on the wing. You can see here, as a winger on support, he looks decent. 
He does look decent. But then it's going to be an inverted winger, isn't it? It's going to be an inverted winger on support, so he cuts it on the left foot. But then wing on support doesn't use composure and stuff, so maybe wing on support is better. You need to improve that weaker foot. But he's only 19, and I have faith he could be a good player. Apaya, I think we've picked up an absolute gem here. This is one of these players who you pick up, you assume is going to be just a standard player. Crossing was 10, dribbling was 10, and passing was 10 when he came in. He's only been in six months. Look at the growth in attributes. So we've got some players here who have the ability to massively, massively develop. And it's going to be exciting to see how we can adjust these players. In terms of youth talent, we do have a couple. We have Schneider, who we picked up from odds, who is doing well for our youth team. You can see here, 13 goals and 11 assists for our youth team. So he's been a solid, solid player. And we've got this um, Omar, who we picked up, who I've been leaving there just to get used to the league and learn the language. So playing for our B team, we've got um, Schultz, who is playing for our B team. He's played 28 games. I just wish our B team would win that one promotion and get into the playable league. Part of me wonders, are they ever going to become playable? That's why I got a feeder club, because I just got sick of the fact that they weren't playable. Um, my biggest challenge now is to try, I'm not sure actually if they managed to do it, to get our feeder club promoted. Please tell me they went up. They did go up, because they are now in the second tier, which means some of these young talents I can send on loan to them next season and see if we can develop them because it, that would be nice. So Steinskoog, for example, played 20 games for them. They can have him on loan again next season because I want to keep him registered at the club because, well, he's a Eggerson boy. I want to keep him contracted. But if we can get him playing football as well, fantastic. But you can see these other guys didn't really feature so much, so I will give them better players next year. But the fact they've gone up is is great. It's great that they've gone up. So in terms of our youth team, it was absolutely fantastic that we just finished run-of-the-mill central position in the league. Um, it's weird that you can't see attributes and stuff. You should be able to view who was top goal scorers and stuff. So as you can see here, 15 goals for uh, Embelsvog. Sargard from central midfield had 10 goals, 6 assists. So we've had players who have been performing really well. The Estonian central defender, he's still only 18. I might give him another year. He's played 32 games this season. In fact, you know what? Let's um, negotiate his contract for straight away, shall we? Negotiate that. He wants actually less money. So we can give you that. I'm not giving you any bonuses i'll tell you what let's give you exactly the same 150 he's took it fantastic so we do have him secure for another year because he's been very solid helping i brought him in with that sole purpose of helping our youth team and he's done that which is great but our youth team did something a little bit more special if we go to club info and history competitions as you can see this is our first team this is our first team Norwegian Under-19 Vogeland Cup winners, 2026. Norwegian Under-19 Cup. We won the Norwegian Under-19 Cup, beating San Ezulf in the final, one of our other local clubs. You can see, by the way, local clubs have done well. Rikin have won it twice. San Ezulf getting to the final. We did it. We are the cup winners. I'm going to drink my coffee to celebrate. So looking through the divisions then, Arndal, Sarsborg and Hamcam went down. Starbeck, Lilstrom, Mulder and Berda Glimp to join us in Europe. In terms of the second tier, Fredrikstad, Christiansund and Sandy Fjord are coming up. Going down was Strumman and Shelsas. Coming up from the third tier was Hunnefoss are coming up from that division. Going down was Hood, Jelasein and Skeeld. Skeeld B team, sorry. And then coming up was Jörviglin. And then uh, Ulkisser in the playoffs. Going down was Strumscud sets 2, Hamcam 2 and Olesund. And then dropping down to the 4th tier, Lilstrom's B team is coming up. Um, Fleurer is coming up. Uh, Aske is coming up. Uh, Madler is going down. Don and Gray, that's from my local division there. Uh, Randa is coming up. Strindheim is coming up. Lise Kloster 
is coming up from the final division. Sola, for some reason, are in this division here. Sola is one of my local clubs, and for some reason, they're in the division with the teams from over in um, Oslo. Uh, they've got Oslo there. You've got Stjernes, Blink. I'm sure they're based up near up near Molde or Bird of Glimt. I'm sure they're up there. I might be wrong, but I'm sure they're up there. But fascinating to see when sometimes teams get dumped in completely the wrong regional division. So in terms of coefficient points so far then, for the 28-29 season, we are, where are we at? We are Norway's 14th, so work our way along. We have 9.4 points so far this season. So going into the next season coming up, we're going to have 44.85. That will see us move up two spots at the minute. So we are going to go up two spots to 12th at the minute and that will get us if we're on qualification places 12th place will get us a, a team directly into the champions league group phase and a team no no it'll get us a team into the champions league second qualifying phase and champions playoffs okay which is currently what we have anyway but 12th place will see us have a team back in the Europa League playoff, where this season coming up, we're going to have a team in the third qualifying round. Okay, I do. Yeah, I'm getting that now. I'm getting that now. We're, we're learning. We're learning. But that is it for a recap. I'm actually going to, for season seven, create new kits. So we're going to have new kits going into the new season. So hopefully that's going to look a nice little bit of extra. And there's probably going to be a few changes. I think three or four players are going to be going out and three or four coming in, I think. I, roughly, I think three or four signings I, I'm going to look at. We need to make some proper changes because we've, we've got some issues we need to fix because this season we were lacking. And a couple of tactical changes will be needed just to make sure this issue is solved for the future. I've been Paul, Osnons and Northman. Thank you for watching this season. Hopefully you enjoyed as we continue Build a Nation on FM24.